Welcome to the Self-Awareness and Self-Compassion Podcast, formerly known as the Full Spectrum Feeling Podcast. I'm your host, Blaise Schwaller, life coach, mom, and former tattoo artist. I help people heal their past, speak their truth, and love the lives that they're living now. Join me here every week for conversations on how to live an imperfect but fully engaged life that embraces all the feels so that you can stretch into your best life while enjoying the you that's here right now. Hello, everybody. This is Blaze. And this week, I want to talk about creating a space where you're allowed and able to actually rest deeply. Now we've hit a season where I think a lot of us might be in panic, or at least I have been in panic about what has and hasn't gotten completed over last year, the things that I thought I was going to start or that I thought would be off to a better start by now. And this is all coming at a time when I think the planet is saying, chill out, just chill out, maybe take a moment. (laughs) So this week, I want to talk about how do we take that moment? How do we create a space where we're able to let off the stress response that's going and ongoing for us, so that we actually get the recuperation and the rest and the healing that the season is actually built for. So again, we've talked about it a lot in the Northeast where I live it's cold. It's getting cold this time of year. Snow is starting to come. Ice is happening. The morning commute is a little bit more stressful. The evening commute is terrifying for me. I really hate being on the road in the dark with ice. It's just, I have bad experiences and it makes me stressed out. And so I find particularly in this season, I have more need of giving myself some nurturing, giving myself some more compassion and allowing myself some grace to allow that it's okay that I feel stressed out about these things, that it's all right, that I'm feeling whelmed. Let's call it whelmed. I'm overwhelmed. I'm not handling everything the way that I wish that I could or would, or if I was a superhero, like I have this image of myself, like I can just handle it all. And somehow I do it and it doesn't bother me. But the reality is that handling things taking care of just the management of a household, the management of a business, the relationships of a family, friendships, all of those things, they all require effort. They all require me to show up. And I don't always have the energy that I want or the emotion that I want around it. So I want to talk about that because I think this is a really human experience that we all have, that we can all show up into our relationships and wish that we weren't the one having something to complain about, feel bad about how things aren't really being handled the way that we wanted in our lives. And we recognize that we're a part of it and we're just looking for relief. So I find when I'm speaking with my friends, when I'm talking with my family, so often in this season, I'm looking for relief and I'm looking for comfort for everything, (laughs) for everything. It's like my body just wants me to have a place to go to curl up and have a hug and be taken care of and told everything's okay. And I'm craving that. And I'm sure a lot of you are as well. And I think it's natural. I think it's normal that we seek this out and hopefully we make space for it often in our lives that we are getting that nurturing and that feedback that we need to feel safe and to feel capable and to have it reflected back to us that we're doing a good job and that it's all going to be fine. And I want to say this to you, if you're experiencing stress, if you're living your life and everything is kind of panicky and crazy and you're like, oh my God, I thought this January would go so much better than last year. And so far it's been a major disappointment for you to hear that you're doing great. You are doing what you need to do. You're showing up, you're doing the best that you can, and it is enough And you are allowed and even encouraged to find the space to give yourself that hug, to tell yourself that you appreciate the work that you've been doing, to maybe sigh into a big pile of blankets on your bed or wherever, hug a pillow, have a good cry, drink your cocoa, drink whatever you need to feel good and to say, I'm okay. I need this break. And all of my efforts are good. You're doing fine. (sighs) Yes. Saying it out loud feels good. 
It feels nice to say that to myself. If I can say to myself, you know what, you've really shown up under duress to handle things. You're handling things, Blaze. Oh. And sometimes handling things does not feel good. It does not. And I recognize that there's the racing heart and it's like adrenaline, right? Like we have this panic and running and we're trying to complete something or get it done well. I particularly have a fear of, I don't even want to say failure. I'm okay with failing, but I have a fear of messing things up and like costing people money or costing people time and just hurting other people by my actions. So I've recently had my own little debacle with some home improvements where communication has not gone well with my company. Things have not been completed on time and I've been in an ongoing battle to get things done and corrected for months. And I'm recognizing that as I'm entering the spring, that there's so much stress and anxiety built up there and it feels awful. And for me, part of allowing myself to have a deep rest needs to acknowledge that those feelings are there. And what I noticed that I did is that I go to my friends and I want to complain or I want to voice it and I want to get it out. And I think that's healthy and it's good, but I'm also recognizing that I can't just keep repeating the story that I don't want to hear over and over again, that I need to start telling myself a better story. And I want to set myself up to allow my body to have the respite that it desires. So one thing that I've noticed when I'm hugely stressed out is that sleep is really difficult and I'm not sleeping well. And I'll wake up in the middle of the night and be like, oh, I should have said, or I can't believe I didn't do. And I go through disaster scenarios. So it's kind of like when you go on Netflix and you're watching just all the doom and gloom apocalypse shows. And that's what I'm feeling like I'm living in my subconscious all the time. And I'm constantly trying to like outsmart the home improvement company is <laughs> out smart life and be like, somehow I'm going to figure out a way where I can fix all this and I'm not in danger. So what I do notice is that no matter what is going on, whether it's just like, it's a piece of paper, it's a contract, it's something like it's, it's a project, it's ongoing. My physical response is honest to God to treat it like it's life or death. I feel like I have made a mistake and I might die now. And allowing myself to rest, I need to somehow find a way to convince my body that we're not dying, that I didn't screw up so badly that we're going to die. And it's actually surprisingly difficult. <laughs> and I'm sure you all know this because you've been through it as well, is that you can tell yourself that you're not dying and that things aren't that bad. And I'm sure it'll work out. But there's definitely the part of you that does not believe that it's going to work out and is throwing a hissy fit and is like, oh my God, we're going to die. We need to fix this and we're going to lose all of our money. And then I go into extremes where my belief set just like jumps off the wall and is like, this is it. You've ruined your finances forever. You'll never have a retirement and your home will be ruined. Like I just go off the, the cliff. So what I'm doing for myself that is helping is to help myself notice that this is the story that I'm telling and to just acknowledge it. So just like in a movie where they put a little pin on it and say, Isn't, aren't you being a little over the top? Isn't this like a little extreme, a little ridiculous? And you just point out the craziness of it. It helps me go, oh, okay. I really am jumping to a predicted future that is not necessarily the future. And it's also not one I want. And I can actually have more power than I'm giving myself to fix things. Some of the things I might have to do to fix things are not things I want to do. And that sucks but I can at least acknowledge that. And even as I'm telling you this, I can hear the difference in my voice and how I feel more centered. And I'm like, oh yeah, I have authority in my own life. And that makes me feel good. And like, I can relax and maybe I can lay down and go to sleep and not wake up in a panic. Or if I do, I'll know how to talk to myself to get off of like the train that's going off of the cliff. I don't need to do that. And you don't need to do that. So we find a kind space in our narrative of how we want our life to go or how we believe it's going to go. And I always want to focus on what is the future I want to create? What is the future that I want to dwell in? And how is that going? And instead of comparing and going, oh, I'm so off, like I'm not actually living that. Instead, I want to go, if I was living that life, what are the feelings that I would feel? What are the thoughts that I would be thinking? And how would I handle some crazy debacle, like what's going on right now? What would be the thing that I'd have to step up and do that maybe isn't what I'm doing in this moment that could help me change things, correct them, have it go better. 
And those questions allow my brain to have something to chew on and do. And then it comes down to the actual doing of them. And it's interesting because I think oh, asking those questions allows me to step into a different kind of self-integrity where I'm like, oh, if this is the way that I want things to go, then I might have to have an angry conversation. I might have to actually stand my ground and stand up for myself. And that seems very scary and I don't want to do it, but it allows me to confront these pieces of myself, right? And be with them. And once I know that they're there and that's, that's the part that's panicking, that's so afraid and is willing to let everything fall apart just so that I don't have to step up and do the thing. That's where true compassion can arise where I'm able to go, oh, okay, please. Like you're legit terrified. You're afraid of hurting someone's feelings. You're afraid of getting it wrong. Oh my God. We're so afraid of saying something wrong of inadvertently causing damage of having something come back that hurts the people that you love, that hurts people just in general. Like I have a huge fear of that. That's, I set up my whole life to try to do nice things for people. So whenever I feel that things have gone awry or there needs to be a confrontation, that for me has been my particular challenge in life. How do I tell someone that they haven't lived up to what they've sold me? How do I tell someone that things are not going well in a way that has kindness, but also isn't me being a pushover. And for me, like that's my hard line to walk and other people have other challenges. Absolutely. Mm. Identifying it lets me have those conversations with my inner self to be able to go, oh, okay, now that I know that that's what's so afraid, I can comfort myself and go, you know what, Blaze, though, you're a really kind person. And sometimes the kind thing to do is not the easy thing to do. Sometimes the words that need to be said are angry. Anger isn't wrong. And you don't need to feel afraid or sad or scared about what's going to happen if you express that anger. You just need to use it in a constructive way. Like this is where you're afraid. You're afraid that you're saying something untrue, but we know that what you're saying is true. You're afraid that what you're saying might be hurtful and it might be, but wouldn't it hurt this other person in their business more to not know what's been going wrong? And I'm able to then correct, give myself the pep talk, calm down. Mm. So then there's the question of how do I help myself relax, even while all this madness is going on, because just telling myself things are okay and deciding, yes, I'm going to have a conversation and even having the conversation does not actually make it all go away. Life still keeps lifing. All the situations still exist. Yeah. Life is like that. It's crazy. And so I have to make a conscious effort to show up in my life and give myself the space to be cozy, to have that relief. And I've decided to allow myself to be playful with it and to not judge myself so harshly for seeming to need more breaks than usual. That's something that I think we do. We know that we need a break. We want a break. We try to take it. And then there's a voice that comes up. That's like, you're not allowed to take this long of a break, or maybe this is too much of a vacation. What are you doing? Watching your shows? Like maybe you should be working harder. And we try to pile more and more things onto ourselves. And that actually doesn't allow us to do more we speed up by slowing down. If we actually give ourselves the restorative time, it's so easy to put out the effort to create new things, to engage in life, to have better relationships, to resolve the actual craziness that's causing all the stress in the first place. But we don't get there if we don't give ourselves the time to recuperate. So I'm reminding myself of that this season. And I want to remind you of that as well. You are deserving of taking breaks. It is absolutely okay to take however many moments you need to breathe, to get back into your center, to feel like you are yourself again, that you are enjoying yourself and who you are and where you are. And sometimes that takes like playing a video game or going for a walk or going to the zoo or wherever you need to go, whatever hobby you want to do, whatever meeting you want to have with friends or gathering, all of us do it differently, but it's important to honor that. And to allow yourself when it's happening to truly be there, to not be off in your head thinking about all the other things, but to recognize that that probably will happen. Like we'll have the fun thing that we want to do or here we're creating the space for relaxation. And then the thought comes in, oh no, there's the thing. It still exists. It's so panicky. I hate it. (sighs) And for me, I, I find it's nice to just have like a light little smile 
like, oh, you're doing it again. Like you're thinking about the thing. Don't worry. The thing will still be there. You don't have to think about it right now. What I noticed the other night, what kept me up was that I kept rehashing the things that I wanted to say or how I wanted to handle what I hoped would happen the next day. And then it finally occurred to me, I was like, Blaze, do you honestly think you're going to forget what you want to say? Do you really have to rehash it for yourself right now at 2.30 in the morning? Or could you actually just trust that when it comes to the morning time and you're making your phone call at 9 a.m., that you will know the words to say? You will not have forgotten all the issues that need correcting, and you'll manage it then. And I laughed a little bit, and I went back to sleep because I'm like, yeah, I I didn't forget. Of course I'm not going to forget. I've been upset about this. Obviously, I know. But I think our body... It's like trying to help us and our brain is like, I just need to remind you at every possible instant, this is the thing. This is what needs to happen. And our brain, I guess, doesn't know that there there might be a time for doing that. And it's not this moment. So we have to kind of correct it because our brain is like a little child that's like, woohoo, I'm going to be here. I'm going to help. And they don't know how to do it. <laughs> that's how I'm thinking of my brain lately is my brain is smart. It has a lot of things to contribute, but it, its sense of timing is not ideal all the time. And that's okay. Oh, but I love myself anyway, and it's going to be all right. <laughs> even with all my quirks, even with all the things that are deeply frustrating. So I think that this particular season, like as we're entering February, it is a season of people feeling like we didn't hit our resolutions. Things aren't going the way we wanted. All of the projects, like they're starting to pile up for the new year and maybe the old ones haven't been completed. And I actually find that across the board, everyone I talk to, we're stressed out people at this time of year. And we need to consciously recognize that when we are this overwhelmed, when there's so many things coming from all sides, it is not the time to stop nourishing ourselves. I think that's what happens is we think like, oh, I'll nourish myself later and I'll just get through the slog and somehow that'll make it better. But that's not how we make it better. We make it better by treating ourselves well, by making a decision that our mental health, our physical health, like our well-being is the most important thing. And that by taking care of that, we then are able to take care of the problems. We're able to interface with other people and help them take care of themselves too. Everybody gets lifted up and that's a beautiful thing. (sighs) So my friends, I wish for you this week to create a moment with yourself where you're able to have that conversation with your brain, with your panicking body, and just be like, well, I see that here we are. It's normal. We're all there. And it's okay that we're having these feelings. And it's also a great time to take a bath, to take a breath, to nourish ourselves, to find something joyful that we're able to fill our cup back up. So that's really what I'm wishing you this week is that you find the thing that fills your cup up a little bit, You don't even need to fill it to overflowing. We don't need to aim that high. Just filling it a little is awesome. And we can do that. That's very doable. So we're going to find a thing that is good, that is nourishing, that allows us that moment where you realize like your breath is like, ah, or you notice that you're smiling for no reason or that you're just smiling. You're like, oh, that's nice. Cause that, it just shows you that it is possible in these little moments to get these little moments of nourishment and they do add up and they do build up and they allow us to create the life that we want to live. May you have a week filled with compassion for yourself. May the voices that are telling you to hurry up and get all the things done diminish and may you have a wonderful week. I will see you next time. Thanks so much for joining me. If you enjoyed this podcast, please subscribe and share it with someone you love and leave us a review. You can learn more and get some self-compassion tips and tricks by visiting coachwithblaze.com where you can sign up to get my free booklet on overcoming anxiety, overwhelm, exhaustion, and burnout. I'm sending you so much appreciation and love and I'll see you next time.